following program is closed captioned for the thinking impaired. Customer service, this is Tic Tac. Can I help you? Um, yes. I'm supposed to have a package delivered today, and the yes. man that delivers in this area has Jeez. already left. I oh, you meet the package. You got to be there when he tried to deliver. You don't get your package. You have to wait another day. No, listen. Why weren't, why weren't you there? Because my daughter missed the bus, and he had tried to deliver it on Saturday when it was due today. I mean, Friday. And he left a little tag. A little piece of paper. Me. Li listen to me. He left a little piece of paper. Yes, he left not, a... Not a slip. You make it sound like he left his dress. Are you being rude? What you talking? I'm trying to figure. I'm trying to help you. Call for customer service. He left a slip. He left a, a piece of paper, papel, a piece of papel, paper. Yes, paper. That's right. He left a a, a, a piece of paper. Yes. I'm a real. He left it. See. Si. Can I speak to someone that can speak English and can understand me? Fine. I transfer you somebody else. You cholo. You. Yeah, this is Willie. Can I help you? Um, yes. I'm trying to um, get yeah. a hold of my package. <laughs> y'all, y'all got your tracking number? Uh, yes, I have the tracking number, but the see, I was supposed to receive it today, and they tried to deliver it on Friday, and I wasn't home, and they left a delivery notice, and well, you um, gotta you gotta be there when I drive and try to drop it off. Why weren't you there? My daughter missed the bus today. What did that have to do with anything? Is the bus going to deliver the, your package? No, our driver going to dr drop out the package. My, my friend Bubba, he one of the drivers. If you send the package a little sooner, you would have uh, had it by now. May I speak to your supervisor, please, because you're being very rude. What you talking Hold on a minute. Oh, there's Jim Bob. Can I help you? What's your name, please? This is Jim Bob. How can I help you? Jim Bob? Okay. I'm trying to locate my package. You bought, give me a, do, you, do you have your tracking number? Yes, I do. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Th this is my problem. Uh, please don't be rude to me like the last two gentlemen were. Well, hold, 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 hold on. What you talking about? I just asked you for your tracking number, and now you're getting all uppity with me. You calm your ass down right this minute, young lady. What kind of business is this? Well, are you trying to f locate a package? Are you going to call up <laughs> yeah, yakking and complaining like a, like a, a, a moron? G give me your damn tracking number. Stop complaining. I want to speak to the f supervisor. Well, well, he out to lunch right now. You, you can just talk to me. G -g -g give me your tracking number. He, he gonna ask for your tracking number just like I'm doing here. Well, maybe he might have some f***ing manners. Oh, well, I, I, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a courteous customer service. The rep. hell you <laughs> are! I ain't giving you. Yeah. Now I want to talk to somebody in charge. Well, I hope your package floating down the river or something. Well, I hope it's shoved up your. <laughs> yeah, this Willie. Can I help you? Oh my God. Um. Yes. What, what are you talking about? Are you calling up yakking and complaining? Is that what you're trying to do again? Are you the one I just talked to? Why are you being so rude? I was just trying to explain something to you, and yeah, you, you ain't, you ain't making me. a whole lot of sense. You ain't making a whole lot of sense. I know that. I know that. I told you you should have sent your damn package a little sooner. I would have got First there. First of all, I didn't f***ing send the package, okay? Well, then who put put the person on the phone that sent the damn package? I want to talk to them. I want to whoever, whoever the one that sent that package. I'll reach to the phone line. I stick a strip of duct tape to their ass and rip it off. This is this is the worst f***ing company I've ever had to f***ing deal Fine, with. Go Why don't you bend over backwards and kiss my f***ing ass, you son of a bitch? somebody else next time. This is perhaps the most beautiful and also the most useful of the four recordings. How many times have even the best of mothers stumbled into embarrassed evasiveness when it comes to the fateful words, 
which would properly describe the physical union of husband and wife. The result, of course, has been that many young girls have had to pick up this information piecemeal from companions, or else have gone into marriage with an incomplete knowledge that could mean great unhappiness for herself and her young husband. Actually, the essential facts of the physical union can be used to illustrate the sublime spiritual beauty of marriage. The story is given truthfully, simply, yet with an economy of detail that enables the young girl to take in this final chapter in the story of creation without shock or embarrassment. The frank use of technical terms is never allowed to detract from the basic beauty of the divine plan. Notice one striking innovation here, the fact that both parents give the instruction together. This wouldn't be possible, unfortunately, in all cases, but it has tremendous advantages the way father and mother supplement each other, the blend of the physical and spiritual, the light touches of family humor, all these keep the scene natural and free from undue embarrassment. And they round out the true ideal of family unity that is the cornerstone of marriage. like sweet music, don't you, Mother? Mm, I suppose so. I can always study best when there's soft music playing. <laughs> I don't see how you can concentrate. Oh, that's nothing. That son of yours always has one of those Cab Calloway records going full blast upstairs when he's studying. <laughs> I know. And he has those awful medical books to wade through. Uh, Mother. Yes, dear. Mother, what do husbands and wives do when they get married? What do husbands and wives... Why do you ask, dear? Well, there were some drawings in Bob's textbook. I didn't mean to look at them honest, and well, then some of the older girls, well... You mean they talk about things sometimes? Well, yes, only they stop when they see me coming. What do husbands and wives do when they get married? It's quite a beautiful story, dear. I suppose it's time you knew. Let's ask your father to come in, too. Daddy? Oh, no. Well, why not? But, Mother, he's a man. Kitty, what a husband and wife do when they're married is the last chapter of a story I started telling you when you were a little girl. A story of how you were born. And since your father and I joined with God to give you life, it's only natural that we should tell you that story together, isn't it? Why, yes, Mother. I just never thought of it that way. Yes, but... Getting him away from those boxing bouts on the television will be something else, I'm afraid. George! Oh, George! Call me, Jane. Yes, come here for a minute, will you, George? Jane Robinson's got him on the ropes. He's down. Oh, see what I mean. George! Come here this instant. It's important. Good night, Jane. Do you have to think up something important every time there's a good fight? I... George, Kitty was just asking what husbands and wives do when they get married. I... I just thought it might be nice if we told her the story together. What husbands and... What, oh. Oh. Oh, sure, kitten. Uh, you start it off, Mother. I'll, I'll put in my two cents as you go along. <laughs> well, dear, you remember in religion class how you learned that marriage makes two people one? Mm-hmm. It makes them one in mind, one in spirit, and one in body. Now, think back to when you were a little girl... Remember how you used to hug that raggedy stuffed doll of yours? Oh, yes. I supposed I hugged the stuffing right out of her. Guess that was pretty silly, wasn't it? Oh, no. You were doing just what all human beings do when they love someone. <laughs> That's it. We all instinctively want to be one with the person we love. So we like to be near them and hug them close. Remember how we cuddled you when you were little? Uh, when we weren't using the slipper on you? Oh, why, Daddy, how can you say such a thing? You know I was a model baby. <laughs> well, I guess I've seen worse. Oh, George, you're no help at all. Be serious for once in your life. You see, dear, this human desire to be united with the one you love was planted in all of us by God for a purpose, and it carries over into married life. But how, Mother? Well, I'm coming to that. You see, when God made a man's body and a woman's body... He so designed them physically that 
they could become like one body in marriage, just as they become one in mind and in spirit. But I don't understand how. Well, of course you don't, kitten. When your mother speaks of God making men and women differently, she means that a man comes out and says what he has to say, while a woman always has to beat around the bush. <laughs> now, George. <laughs> now, look, honey. Remember when you busted into the room one day when Mother was changing Jimmy and you first noticed that he was made differently from you? Yes, and you told me it was so you and Mother would know which of us was a boy and which was a girl. That's right. And with you being the tomboy you were, it was about the only way we could know. Well... God has another reason, too. Remember later how your mother told you about the different openings in your body and what they were for? Yes, I, I told you there was a tiny opening in the folds between your legs called the vagina, and that when you were married, and if God sent you a baby, that the baby would come through that opening when it was time for it to be born. Yes, I remember, Mother. You see, kitten, God designed that opening in your body for another purpose, too. And that's where this business of desiring to be one with your husband comes in. When a man and a woman are married, their love makes them want to embrace each other closely. And this is a very holy thing. For God so made a man and a woman that part of the man's body, which we call the penis, can actually pass within his wife's body through the vagina. Oh, but mother... Oh, darling, that's a great deal more than a physical union. When it is... Properly completed in marriage, both the husband and wife experience a spiritual joy that, well, it, it's beyond words to describe. And well, here's why, kitten. That union was designed by God for another purpose, too. In fact, this one is the most important of all. Remember our telling you once how a seed from the father passed within a tiny egg that grew inside the mother, and that this was how God created a baby? Yes, Dad. Well, it's when a husband and wife are joined in this physical oneness that the seed passes from the husband into his wife. And there, God, if he so wills it, creates a new little soul. That's why both Daddy and I love you so much, honey. You see, you're part of each of us. Oh, Mother, that's, that's so different than those things a girl at school were saying. I mean, it... it sounds so beautiful. Oh, it is beautiful, dear. And that's why God wants us to guard our bodies and our minds, too, until we're married. Just the way I'm keeping my wedding dress spotless for you until your very own day comes. Oh, that's sweet, Mother. I'll remember. <sighs> my goodness, look at the time. And I have an exam tomorrow. Night, Dad. Night, Mother. Night, Night darling. <laughs> well... <clears throat> that wasn't too bad, was it? They act so grown up sometimes. <laughs> They're really such babies. <laughs> no more of a baby than you were when I married you. <laughs> I guess you're right. Jane, you want me to tell you something? It's... Oh, it's kind of nice having a couple of grown-up babies around the house. Very nice. Thank you, dear. Thank you very much. As you lie there and listen to my voice, you know that I am your friend. And so you can rest now. You will listen to my voice and you will remember everything I say. Because you know we love you, we want you, and we need you, and your family is very proud of you. You will listen to my voice, and you will rest quietly. You can do everything I tell you, and remember everything I tell you. You know we love you, and we want you, and we need you, and you are safe in our care. So you are happy, for when you are happy, we are proud of you. Dreams are real good. Dreams make your sleeping time happy. Now you can close your eyes and rest. You don't have to do anything or go anywhere. Just close your eyes for a while and rest. Then nice dreams will come to you. You can always sleep easy because you know that your family loves you and will watch over you as you sleep. And when you are loved, 
you will sleep well. And then a happy dream will come to you. You like to go to sleep and tell yourself what to dream. Now you can have funny dreams or pretty dreams. You can have small dreams or big dreams. And all the time you are dreaming, you are safe and cozy in your bed. You don't have to go anywhere. It's just like magic. So now you like to sleep and dream. All your good dreams come when it is soft and dark because you can't see dreams in the light. Dreams are like stars. Stars are always prettiest in the dark. Stars sparkle and are pretty. Your dreams are pretty too. And if you ask yourself to have quiet dreams, they will be quiet. You can sleep and wait for a dream. And when it comes, it will be happy or pretty. You can dream about things that are fun because you know that everyone loves you so. You will sleep happy, and now you can tell yourself, when I go to sleep, I will be happy because everyone loves me, and all my dreams will be happy dreams. Once I rose above the noise and confusion Just to get a glimpse beyond the illusion I was soaring never higher, but I flew too high. Though my eyes could see, I still was a blind man. Through my mind could think I still was a madman. Hear the voices and the dreaming. I can hear them say, carry on my wayward son. There'll be peace when you are done. Lay your weary head to rest Don't you cry no more Masquerading as a man with a reason My charade is an event of the season And if I claim to be a wise man it surely means that I don't know On a stormy sea of moving emotion Tossed about I'm like a ship on the ocean I set a course for winds of fortune But but I hear the voices say Carry on my wayward son There'll be peace when you are done Lay your weary head to rest don't you cry no more. Hello there, this is Ern Westmore from Hollywood. And as you know, beauty is my business. Yes, it's been my job as a director of makeup in Hollywood during this past 40 years to glamorize the stars of the screen and teach women throughout the world how to improve their appearance by emphasizing their good features and minimizing their so-called bad features. I say so-called bad features because that feature which you may think is a bad one is nine times out of ten the one wonderful feature that can make you a most attractive and beautiful person. Now, before I go any further, I want to take this opportunity to make a very definite promise to you, and it's simply this. If you will be patient and honest with yourself with respect to your face shape and the problems relating to it, then apply the simple, basic holiday magic rules as I explain them to you. I'll promise you, regardless as to whether you are young, middle-aged, or on the wrong side of 50, that you can become a far more attractive person than you ever dreamed possible. Now I know that there are some of you women who will say, why should I waste my time each day trying to make myself more beautiful? Well, I'll tell you why. If not for yourself, then try to remember this. Your face is looked at, reacted to, and rated by your friends, family, co-workers, employer, and however silently, by a good many strangers wherever you go. To be perfectly blunt about it, your face is on display from early morning until you turn the light out at night. As a pioneer in this fascinating field of beauty, 
It's been my good fortune to see literally thousands of the most amazing transformations take place in women who took the time to apply the holiday magic principles of skin care and makeup, gained such satisfaction and confidence, such command and control of themselves, that whatever self-consciousness they may have had, it automatically disappeared, and in turn, they not only developed a brand new personality with self-assurance, but I think more important than almost anything, was the renewed hope and the enthusiasm with a real new interest in their daily walk of life. Now I ask you, are these personal values for which most women yearn worth thinking about, worth taking the time each day to become more attractive? Certainly the results cannot be called skin deep. Yes, you spend 24 hours a day growing older. Why not try spending just 30 minutes a day staying young, beautiful, and more attractive? Truthfully, your face and features are not a bit different than that of our Hollywood stars. Yours are exactly the same. The big difference between these successful and totally glamorous women and you is that they take the time to apply all of the basic principles of massage and facial exercise that you're going to learn to enjoy applying to yourself and become a star in your own right. Yes, right in the privacy of your own home. Yes, just the same as the young glamorous looking star on the front cover of this album. Who is she? She is the same person that posed for these exercise pictures. Her name is Bonnie Cooper. She's not a model or an actress. She is one of our wonderful holiday magic girls that practices and sells what she preaches. As you can see, she is truly beauty, glamour, and personality. A star in her own right, and the wonderful world of holiday magic. Now then, before I direct you through your facial exercise routines, I want to explain the correct basic fundamental hand manipulations for cleansing your face and giving yourself a facial massage. I find that there's a great many women who have the mistaken idea that because they use cleansing cream to cleanse their face, that's all they need to do. Well, cleansing your face is not massaging. However, by understanding the basic principles of massage, you're more apt to handle your daily cleansing and creaming in a way that will help keep your skin tissues and face muscles firm rather than break them down. At 20 as a rule, wrinkles are not present. However, they're in the formative stages and should be discouraged. At 30, the signs to watch for are the lines on your forehead and the frown lines between your eyebrows. And from 40 to 50, the muscles are feeling the full pull of gravity. If you've neglected yourself, you can be sure that a drooping condition is on the way. If your earlier neglect is now showing, remember it's never too late to start working to improve your appearance and you're never too young or too old to apply the basic principles of properly cleansing your face or giving yourself a facial massage. The mistake that most women make is that they neglect their skin until it's almost too late. Without a regular facial massage routine at least once a week, by the time you're 25, you look 30. And at 30, you look 40. Then at 40, you look 60 or more. This, however, does not mean that all is lost, not by any means. Because, as I've said before, regardless of your age, you can start today to reclaim and revitalize some of your lost facial beauty through proper exercise, manipulation, and stimulation of the skin and muscles. Now then, if I've stimulated your interest enough to induce you into becoming a more attractive person, then open your album and stand it up on a table in front of you. What you see before you is the very first scientifically compiled massage and facial exercise routine guide ever. It's your step-by-step, -step, yes, your first big step, to your new holiday magic, beauty, glamour, and personality. With it, you'll be able to mold your features, chin and neck, help hold back some of the signs and lines of neglect or age. These routines will help make your skin look firmer, smoother and lovelier than you ever dreamed possible. There are four things that I want you to keep in mind at all times, regardless as to whether you are cleansing your face or giving yourself a massage. Number one is to select a time each day when you can completely relax with no interruptions. Number two is to comfortably seat yourself before a mirror. Number three 
is to apply a generous amount of strawberry frappe cleansing cream. You can start applying it right now. You'll find that this cream has not only a wonderful ability to cleanse your face and neck, but you'll also find that your fingers will glide more smoothly as we go through the routines. Number four is to remember that in all facial hand manipulations, the movement should always be a gentle, circular, upward, outward motion with your fingertips. Never ever stretch or pull the skin out of place and never ever slap or pat your face to the extent that you damage the tiny blood vessels underlying the skin. Instead, use your fingertips as though you were playing a piano. Now for your basic facial hand manipulations. The illustrations in the top row will help to guide you through them as I explain each one to you. Now, it's certainly not expected of you to do these exercises right the very first time that you try them. However, you'll find that by doing them each and every day, they'll not only become second nature to you, but you'll also master the rhythm of them, and because of the results you will see, you'll look forward to doing them. Here's the first one. Are you ready? Have you applied your strawberry frappe cleansing cream? Then let's get started. For the chin and throat, use the flat of your fingers, alternating your hands in a gentle, pressing, lifting movement. Work them from the base of your throat, up to the point of the chin, and around the neck to one ear then back around to the other ear and back to the center. You can do this movement two or three times. Keep in mind that you will be alternating the use of your hands, first the right, then the left. Now with your right hand, start at the base of your throat, now up your chin and over to the left ear, now all the way over to the right ear and back to the chin. Now with your left hand, start at the base of the throat, up to your chin and over to the right ear. Now all the way over to your left ear and back to the chin. Once more, right hand up the throat, over to the left ear. Now over to the right ear and back to the chin. Next with your left hand, up the throat, over to the right ear, back over to the left ear and to the chin. That's it for the chin and throat movement. Now for the jaw and throat movement. This one will help your jowls or a double chin. First, cup your hands and place them under your chin and jawline as illustrated. Place your elbows on your table and start a soft but firm gentle kneading motion from your chin back to your ears. Keep your knuckles down under your jawbone. One, two, three, four. Once more. Start at the chin and back up under the ears. One, two, three, four. Back to the chin and once more. One, two, three, four. Now I want you to shake your hands to relax your fingers and then we'll move on to the lower cheek movement. For your lower cheek manipulation, place the first three fingers of each hand on the lowest point of your cheek and move them gently upward and outward in a series of little lifting circles to the ear. Then gently massage the squint lines around your eyes. Return your fingers to your chin and repeat the movement two or three times. Let's try this one. Three fingers of each hand on your lower cheeks. Thumbs under your chin. This will steady your hands. All right, start moving your fingertips upward and outward in little lifting circles to the ear. One. Two, three, four, five, six. Now gently massage the little squint lines at the sides of your eyes. Don't forget the little circular movement with your fingertips. One, two, three, four. Once more, start the three finger lifting movement up the cheeks to your ears. One, two, three, four, five, six. And over to your eyes. One, two, three, four. That's it for the lower cheeks. Now for the forehead manipulation, which embraces the next two photos covering the horizontal and vertical movements. We start the manipulation with the vertical sequence using the fingertips of both hands. Alternate your hands to lift the forehead in a series of light upward strokes from your eyebrows to your hairline. 
then with one hand work across the entire forehead from temple to temple to help smooth out the frown lines. We'll do this one six times. Are you ready? All right, start lifting. Left hand up, right hand up. Move your hand over the entire surface of your forehead with these little lifting strokes. Up, up, five, six. Now the horizontal movement. With one hand, work across your entire forehead from temple to temple, six times. One, two, three, four, five, six. That will do it. This next facial manipulation is probably the most important of the entire group since the tissues around your eyes are far more delicate and sensitive than any other part of your face. Therefore, I want to caution you with three rules. Number one, be very gentle. Number two, do not press too hard. Number three, do not pull or stretch the skin. We start this around the eye manipulation by gently pressing your middle fingers at the inner corners of your eyes. Let them rest there for a moment or two. Now then, Slide both fingers down underneath and around the eye up to the temple and back up to the starting point at the inside corner of your eyes. Do this one three or four times. Let's try it. Gently rest your middle fingers in the corners of your eyes. Hold it, hold it. Now make the complete circle down under your eyes and up to the temple once more. Middle fingers in the corners of your eyes, down and around, and up to your temple. Once more. Fingers in the corners, hold it. Now down and around. That's it for the eyes. Now for your nose and upper cheek movement. Slide your middle fingers up and down the center of your nose. Then start at the sides of your nose using the small circular motion. Move gently across your cheek and up to the temple. At this point, I want you to slide your fingers back across your cheeks in one stroke, up to the inside corner under your eyes. Ready? Slide your middle fingers up and down the center of your nose. One, two, three, four, five. Now then, place your fingers on the sides of your nose and with the same little circular movements, that you used before, move your fingertips gently outward and upward to your temple. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now back across your cheek in one stroke to the sides of your nose. This manipulation has a threefold purpose to be exact. It also helps under eye puffiness. Now for the last one, and it likewise has a twofold benefit. It not only helps to correct laugh line crevices, but it's wonderful for a drooping lip line. We start this one by using short, quick, upward, outward strokes at the outer corner of your mouth. As for your laugh line crevices, begin at the corners of your mouth using the circular motion in the upward, outward direction. Let's do this last one. To pick up your lip line, use the short, quick strokes in an upward and outward direction. One, two, three, four, five. Now the circular motion. Begin at the corners of your mouth and it's circular, upward and outward. One, two, three, four, five. That's it. Remember, it's always upward and outward. And there you have it, a simple but thorough facial routine of correct hand manipulations that will help make your skin look lovelier to look at and lovelier to touch. I'd like to take this next few minutes, if I may, before we turn the record over to do the facial exercises, to tell you the most fascinating and interesting cosmetic story that I've ever heard. Truthfully, it was one of my reasons for joining Holiday Magic. The story of Holiday Magic began with the little-known folklore stories of beauty aids, myths, and beliefs that were passed down from generation to generation. For centuries, women have endeavored to enhance their appearance with products of nature, such as flowers from the field, leaves and bark from the trees and shrubs. Yes, our great-grandmothers had to depend on ingredients that were readily available to them, fruits and vegetables from their gardens, eggs and milk 
from their fowl and animals. But Helene Fly, the founder of the Holiday Magic Cosmetic line, was a curious woman with a lively interest in this kind of folklore. As a hobby, she began collecting the old-time homemade beauty recipes from friends and relatives. Later, she went from door to door asking women what they actually used for skin care. Her discoveries intrigued her. Her interest grew. She began evaluating the old world mysticism with the new world cosmetic knowledge. Some of the results were encouraging, of course, while others were disappointing and were discarded. But from her research grew the germ of an idea. Why not combine the best of the old with the newer ingredients using the principles based on modern cosmetic technology for a new line of cosmetics? She did. And this was the beginning of the Holiday Magic Cosmetic line. A woman with a creative imagination, together with her group of learned cosmetic chemists, developed the formulas used today. Ingredients were obtained from all over the world. Some are exotic and costly. Others are as familiar as your own garden. Each ingredient is chosen for its purity and quality, then artfully blended and formulated with meticulous care. You'll find that the Holiday Magic Cosmetics are excitingly different. They're not only luxurious to touch, but their soft colors and fresh fragrances make them more than a delight to use. That's Holiday Magic. Yes, the skin care products in particular are certainly most excitingly different. The strawberry frappe cleanser is as light as whipped cream. It whisks away dirt, dust, and stale makeup. The fruit tang skin toner is designed as a rinse to complete your cleansing routine, leaves your skin delightfully refreshed. Then there's the papaya do moisture cream, which is rich with moisturizers. If you want petal soft skin with youthful beauty, the Deep Miracle Cleanser loosens the film of natural secretions that form over your skin with its wonderful penetrating action. Prepares your face for the Miracle Mask, which draws out the deeply embedded dirt and dust. As the Miracle Mask dries, your skin appears to have a more exhilarating and rosier glow. The Mint Ice with Honey and Almonds is excellent for the entire family. Its gentle abrasive action is a thorough facial scrub that helps to brighten dull, drab complexions. Teenagers just love it. The Vitaglow Night Cream is a rich blend of emollients that helps your skin in its normal functions. The Lemon Delight Eye and Throat Oil is as exotic as the Arabian Nights. It helps to protect the very delicate areas around your eyes and throat. The Avocado Hand Cream forms an invisible glove that protects busy hands. It's so smooth and creamy, yet never greasy. The last but not least in the skincare group is the banana body lotion that helps soften the dry scaly patches of your elbows, heels, and knees. If you've never had the thrill or the pleasure of using these amazing products, by all means, ask your holiday magic girl about them. She will suggest a correct skincare routine that will be designed for your own particular needs. Her services will cost you nothing. The information is yours for the asking. Now turn your record over and we'll start the facial exercises. Customer service, may I help you? Yes, I need um, the location for uh Yes, uh, where I can ship a package. Yeah, where, uh, where are you calling from? Knoxville, please. Where? Knoxville. Oh, yeah. Oh, how much does it weigh? I don't know. That's why I need to take it somewhere. You don't know how, how am I supposed to track your, your, how much it's going to cost? You don't know how much it weighs. Uh, What's sir? What's the matter with you? Sir, um, I just wanted to know if there was a... Uh, uh, service center in Knoxville that I could go to. Yeah, but I, I, I told you I need to know how much your package was. I need to know the the, 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 the dimensions before I can tell you how much it's going to cost you. You I people call up. I, I don't, I need that information. Sir, how What's am I supposed to know if how much? If you would just shut up and let me explain to you. I Excuse need to know. Excuse me? I but let me explain. You just calm your ass down, young lady. You work for yes, sir. 
Yeah, give me the dimensions of your package this? so I can hurry up and take another call. I've been here okay. since 8 o'clock this okay. morning. Sir, I cannot believe that you represent Yes, You better get another job. The American Broadcasting Company presents I Love Adventure. Incident number 12, Hearse on the Highway, a new Carlton E. Morse production featuring Jack, Doc, and Reggie. Ten o'clock on a cold, rainy night on a state highway curving along the coast of Southern California. Jack Packard and Doc Long are in the cab of a two-ton delivery truck, attired in the khaki uniforms and peaked caps usually worn by truck drivers. Doc is at the wheel, peering anxiously through the foggy windshield at the barely visible white line down the middle of the road. Jack seems more interested in the side roads intersecting the main highway and adjusts the wind wings so he can see out as they speed along. Jack, you have to keep that wing open. This cab's like an icebox already. Bear up a little longer, Doc. We've almost finished our day's work. Night's work, you mean. And just what is our work? Why, we're truckers, of course. Anybody can tell that from our clothes. Oh, what side you, Jack? Why are we wearing this disguise? Why are we driving up and down the highway for three nights running looking for something? And what are we looking for? And why don't you let me in on it? Well, I had what I thought was a pretty good reason for keeping you in the dark, but it doesn't seem to be working out. You keep telling me to keep my eyes open, but what for? Hijackers. Hijackers? Is that what we're looking for? That's it. Why didn't you tell me? I might have noticed something. Well, I knew what we were looking for, and I haven't noticed anything. Mm. Hijackers, huh? I've been reading about it in the papers. They having a regular epidemic down here, ain't they? Yeah, I've been going on for months now. Local police have been yelling for help. That's why we're here. Well, are we working with the police? No, we're working for the Citizens' Welfare Committee. Well, who are they? The local welfare organization. Semi-political, I believe. Anyhow, they think this hijacking business is a reflection on the fair name of Southern California, and they want to stop. You mean they want us to stop it? That's about it. We report to Xavier Carmichael, chairman of the committee. Well, son, how'd they happen to pick on us? Well, we got a telegram from this Mr. Carmichael asked me to come down here for an interview last week. He's got headquarters in an office building in downtown Santa Lorenzo. So you come all the way down here to see him? Yeah, I came down to see him. Come in, Mr. Packard. I know you by reputation, and it's a pleasure to meet you. Well, thanks, Mr. Carmichael. I'm flattered, I'm sure. Well, we're not as far out of the world as you might think. We know what's going on. Uh, sit down, please. Oh, thanks. What's it all about? Well, undoubtedly, you've read about the wave of hijacking going on down here. Yes, I have. Several truck drivers murdered, I believe. That's right. Well, Mr. Packard, as chairman of the Citizens Welfare Committee, I am prepared to offer you a good fee and expenses to get at the bottom of this hijacking for us. You mean to work with the local police? Absolutely not. But the local police follow their own clues. As citizens whom I represent have sent for you to do the cleanup job alone. Well, what's wrong with the police? Oh, we're just tired of this hijacking and nothing done. We don't blame the police, but we want some action. I know you're Sheriff Hunley by reputation. I always thought he was a very capable man. Well, you see how capable he is. Practically every load of liquor and cigarettes that leaves the Santa Lorenzo Consolidated Warehouses is hijacked. In fact, it almost looks like a put-up job. And with us being so close to the border, we're stymied. You mean you think Sheriff Hunley... Well, that's not Hunley himself, but someone under him. I'm not accusing anyone until I get the facts. That's what I want you for. Oh, I'm interested, Mr. Carmichael. It may take time, but I'll have a try if you like. We're willing to stand a reasonable amount of expense. I've made out a check for your first week's services. Well, that's pretty generous. And by the way, have you any suggestions? Any place where you want us to begin operations? That's your business, sir. I won't attempt to tell you how to go about it. Mm -hmm. Play it any way I see it, huh? Exactly. Well, that sounds all right. Good afternoon. Good luck, Mr. Packard. It's 
So that's how we happen to be here, Doc. I bet you the police will yell bloody murder if we break this case. Oh, say, son, I thought that Sheriff Huntley was a friend of yours. He was. Still is, I hope. Well, does he know we in town? Sure. I went to see him, too. Well, if it isn't Jack Packard himself. I haven't seen you in a coon's age. Well, how are you, Sheriff? I thought you'd be back in the Army now they're looking for good top sergeants again. <laughs> I tried, but they said I was too old. What are you doing down here anyway, Packard? Don't you know? Well, now that you come right out and ask me, yes, I do. You're working for Xavier Carmichael. I can see he doesn't keep a secret very well. Yeah, what can you expect from amateurs? Any objections to my new assignment? No, not at all. I'm just as anxious to get this hijacking business cleared up as Carmichael. More, in fact. Hey, just what is Carmichael's racket? Oh, he's made a pile of dough in the drug business. He's organized this citizen's welfare committee as a hobby. Yeah, they, they do a lot of good and help the veterans and write to the newspapers and all that. Mm. I wouldn't say you two were exactly working together. Uh, no, no, opposite sides of the political fence. Well, I'd like to cooperate with you on this business, Sheriff, but my orders are to go it alone. Oh, I understand, Jack. You can't always pick your clients. It was nice of you to come and see me. Under the circumstances, I doubted if you wouldn't. Well, uh, don't spill my play, huh? I imagine Carmichael would hit the ceiling if he knew. Uh, you can depend on me. If you need any help, don't worry on that score. Well, that's fair enough, Sheriff. Well, I meant it when I said I'm anxious to get the bottom of these hijackings. Several drivers have been killed, friends of mine. Just between ourselves, we haven't been able to get a single lead on the gang that's doing it. They specialize in cigarettes and liquor, I hear. Yeah. yeah and then a fast trip across the border. They seem to know every time a load of the stuff hits the road. There's a leak somewhere. You've already checked the trucking companies? Every one in the district. Uh, how about the drivers themselves? Well, they don't know what they're carrying until they're on the road. They know it may mean their life if they talk. And too many of them been killed. No, it's not the drivers. Well, Sheriff, if you haven't been able to crack it, I don't know what I'm doing here. But the fee is good and a job's a job in this game. Well, glad to have you. And don't forget what I said. If you get into any trouble, need any help, just yell. Thanks. And don't think I haven't got the voice for it. Well, I feel a little bit better knowing the sheriff's office ain't gunning for us. Sheriff Hunley's all right. Hey, here comes the truck. He's blinking his light. He's saying hello. Blink back at him. You okay? Hello, air feller. <laughs> Hope he ain't carrying no cigarettes or liquor. If he is, I bet he's none too happy. Gets mighty lonesome on this stretch of highway at night. Not getting nervous, are you? Oh, no, I'm just tired. Plenty of strain watching this white line. Yeah, I know. I'll take the wheel on the way back. When are we going back? As soon as we have a bite to eat. I think there's a cafe along here somewhere. Yeah, down the road, please, sir. A roadside cafe. We ain't tried it yet. Yeah, there are the lights up ahead. Roadside cafe. Hmm. I can always remember places to eat. Popular place. A lot of trucks parked around. Must be good. That's one thing I've learned about the trucking business. Trucks stop where the eating is good. Yeah, I hope you're right. Yeah, here we are. And am I hungry? Hey, there's a space in between those two trucks. Look, it's son. Ain't no wonder there's so many trucks outside. It ain't the food, it's that beautiful blonde. Watch it, Doc. She may not be so dumb either. <laughs> hey, there's a couple of vacant stools down the far end of the counter. Yeah, uh, lead on. Hey, Goldie, how about another egg sandwich on toast? Egg sandwich. Burn it. Mm. Nice shape, huh, Jack? Remember what I told you. Yeah, gosh, it's nice to sit down and not have no wheel in your hand. You said it, brother. I see white lines in my sleep. Yeah, I'll be satisfied if I can see them when I'm awake. Hey, Goldie, how's about a couple of cups of Java? Okay, Java coming up. And a menu. Menu's on the blackboard. Yeah, up there on the wall. You fellas haven't been trucking long, have you? No, just breaking in. How'd you know? Oh, I haven't seen you around, and you ain't been here before. You've known about the blackboard. Yeah, we didn't know about this place. Oh, all the truckers hang out here. Mr. Java, you saw the ice out of your bones. Honey, I thawed out the minute I laid eyes on you. 
Um, how about a date on my night off? You're talking out of the wrong side of your mouth, pal. Pull the chili for me, please. What'll be for you, Yardbird? How about Saturday night? Booked up two months solid. Get your mind and your ease. I'll buy him a chili. I'm starving. Medium. On two. Hey, don't go away. We're just getting acquainted. I got better company to keep. How you doing, Bing? Hey, I bought you a little present, Goldie. Hey, Doc, look. Bottle of bonded stuff. Oh, you're a pal, Bing. I got a whole case for you outside. Oh, I'd have been happy with a quart. Hot shot trip, huh? How do you think I got it? Oh, I knew you'd make it. You can afford to take me into Los Angeles now. I'll be back Saturday night. I'll be waiting. Excuse me, your stand's ready. Hot shot trip. That's what they call carrying an important load, Doc. Yeah, I get it. Oh, I'm sorry, Bing. I didn't know Goldie was your gal. Ah, it's all right, fella. I've been trying to make the grade a long time. Yeah, she's worth waiting for. If you ever get fed up, let me have your place in the line. Two chilies makes sense. I'll eat on the way, Goldie. i got to step on it now. Okay. Bye, Bing. Be seeing you. I'll leave the case in the storeroom. Oh, swell. Bye, Goldie. Hey, uh, honey, is this radio work? Sure. But you got to turn it on. Take the minute to warm up. Hmm. Took me less than that to warm up to you, baby. Ah, I bet you're wonderful on a dance floor. I can stomp a little, if that's what you mean. Well, look, now that Bing's gone, we can get down to business. Hey, don't go away. Sorry, I gotta phone my mother. Well, let me treat you. Here's a nickel. Why not? I'm thankful for small favors. Well, when you get through talking, can I come see you in the phone booth? No, not tonight. There's onions in that chili. You don't seem to be going over so well. Oh, she's just playing hard to get. Uh, we don't want any trouble with this fellow Bing. The less attention we attract, the better. Oh, gold is just being nice to him on account of the bottle good. Yeah, lots of static around here. No, that's Goldie calling her mother. On my nickel, too. It better be her mother. Well... I've had enough. How about you? I could stand a piece of pie. You mean you want to hang around that waitress? Well, it'd probably break her heart if I don't wait to see her. Come on, Doc. Forget it. Well, how about paying her check? I left money. Here we go. Now you can see for yourself how hard it is to drive in this rain. Yeah, kind of tough on the eyes. Glad we had that hot chili. I wonder what drivers done before they had windshield wipe. Hey, what's that up ahead? Looks like a fire. Somebody's burning trash. In this rain? Oh, yeah, that is kind of fun. I think it's a flare. Yeah, there are two of them. Sure, somebody's truck's broke down. Uh-huh, parked the side of the road. Flares front and back. Slow down, maybe we can help. You know anything about trucks? Only just enough to drive again. Uh, that's what I thought. Hey, Jack, is a guy underneath working on it. Well, we'll pull alongside and sympathize anyway. Hey, under there. You need any help? Guess he didn't hear you. Hey, there. You in trouble? <laughs> he must be deep. Can you see him? Yeah. Well, what you know, it's a friend Bing. Bing? You mean the fellow at the cafe? Yeah, the guy that gave gold to that lick. We better take a look. Hey, you, you don't Get think... out. I got a hunch something's wrong. Hey, Bing. Bing, can we help you? He hasn't moved. I'm going under there. Hey, look, son. That wrench is taped to his hand. Yeah. We'll shake him. No use. He's dead. Dead? You you mean... Yeah. Shot through the heart. Oh, poor um. I guess he was carrying cigarettes and liquor all right. Come on, we got a job to do. Doing what? I got a hunch. Let's get on it. Slow down. Here's the highway. Well, where to now, son? Turn right. The roadside cafe. The roadside? Say, now, ain't that a mean trick on Goldie? Goldie? Oh, the blonde waitress. Well, why is it a mean trick? Well, Bing being dead and all, she's probably feeling pretty bad. I I wouldn't want to take advantage of her. She's a nice kid. How are you going to take advantage of her? Well, son, she kind of likes me, and... Now that her date for Saturday night is busted, I could probably step right into Bing's shoes. And that's just what you're going to do. 
Well, Jack, you mean that you approve of my interest in Goldie? I not only approve, I'm encouraging it. Well, hey there, you you have had a change of heart. Look, you know what's in this package here? No, I don't. I've been wondering. Looks like a Christmas present. Well, not exactly. It's a gift for Goldie. Oh, a gift for Goldie. Hey, now, you don't mean that you... No, no, I'm not trying to beat your time. You're going to present it to the fair young lady yourself. Oh, I am? Well, it must be a catch somewhere. Well, what, what's in the pack? A couple of bottles of scotch. No kid. Oh, oh man, is she going to like that? Very much, I think. Well, wait just a minute now, son. Uh, Bing, that other driver, he give her a whole case of liquor just before he was found dead. Well, you wanted to step right into Bing's shoes, didn't you? Not all the way, if you know what I mean. And when she asked if you're hauling cigarettes and liquor, you answered just like Bing did. Well, how was that? Just say... Where do you think I got this stuff? Hey, you don't think Goldie had anything to well, do I'm with it. Well, I'm going to find out pretty quick. If she's the leak, we're going to be hijacked tonight. You mean you think she finds out from the drivers when they're hauling stuff that the hijackers want? Why not? Oh, hey, I don't think I like Goldie nearly so much. Well, don't go jump to conclusions till we prove it. But if we prove it, I won't be here not to like her. you got your gun handy, haven't you? Right here in my shoulder holster. That's how come you asked me twice tonight if I was set for target practice. That's it. And if Goldie says anything about Bing, we know nothing about it. Only what we read in the paper. Right. Even the police don't know we found him. Oh, hey, you didn't identify yourself when you called in from that gas station. No, I just told him I was a motorist passing by. No point in our getting mixed up in it. Well, here's a roadside cafe. I'm pretty excited, but not in just the same way I was last night. Pull in here. That's it. Ain't many trucks here tonight. Well, a little earlier, I guess. Don't forget your package. Yeah, yeah, give it to me. Now, do your stuff, Doc. Remember, this may be the break we've been waiting for. And about time. Well, if you ever made a play for a girl, do it tonight. Oh, now you're talking about the kind of work I was cut out to do, wooing the women. Not that I think you're right about gold. Maybe. She is. Hi, Goldie. Hello. Not so crowded tonight. Nah, no, never is for seven. Have you missed me, honey? Look, I haven't had to throw anything at you yet, but when I do, I won't miss. Oh, ain't you the kidder? Well, let's sit down. Anywhere, Goldie? Sure, no reserved seats here. Hey, I've been carrying your picture around with me ever since I seen you last, Goldie. Picture? I didn't give you no picture. It's in my mind. I can't see nothing else. Then all I gotta say is, you better let your friend do the drive. Truer words were never spoken. He almost ditched us last night. Okay, well, it be, Jen. Slab of cheese on rye for me. You eating, handsome? Well, thank you for them kind words, Sugarfoot. Oh, I'll just sit right here and look at you. What's eating you? You look as sick as our beef sandwich. He's in love, Goldie. For guy's sake, give him a date so he can do his share of the trucking. American on rye. Javin? Yeah, one for the love lawn, too. Colored? No, we're taking blank. Just made up a batch. I'll see if it's ready. How am I doing? Uh, bad. You better eat something, though. No, uh uh-uh. We're going to have action. I shoot better on an empty stomach. You really don't seem to be worrying about being in it. No. <laughs> but that's always the effect I have on widows. You should come. Now, don't forget your package. Here you are. First two cups out of the kettle. Um, have you thought any more about Saturday night, Goldie? What about Saturday night? Well, I sort of thought that maybe you might have changed your mind about... About going out with him. Oh? You got a car? Well, no, not just exactly. I ain't going nowhere in no truck. Well, it gets you there and it gets you back. What's the difference? My chinchilla don't look good in a truck. No, thanks. Oh, Goldie, now, that ain't no way to treat me. After what I brung you, too. Yeah? What did you bring me? Here. That's a present for you. Oh, oh gee, thanks. What is it? Open it up and see. Oh, Scotch. This is a surprise. Yeah, I thought maybe you might like it. It's best brand on the market. Yeah, swell stuff. So you're not hauling these. Well, where you think I got it at? Gee, a hot shot already, it's huh? Important to slow down the highway. You can't keep a good man down. Yeah, I guess you got a future, all right. Well, I finished my feed bag. You ready, Doc? You had that sandwich already? Sure, but you wouldn't know. You've been in a trance. Hey, um... Goldie, I'll I get automobile for Saturday night. I'll rent one. Okay, handsome. 
Okay, it's the deal. Come on, Doc. We're behind schedule. All right, all right. Bye, Goldie. I'll see you Saturday. I'll be waiting. Good work, Doc. Mm. You done all right, huh? I'm in. Let's get going. Am I still driving? Yep. Yeah, got me a date, too. You know Jack is something about yeah, me. Yeah, sure is. It takes a busy blonde to see it. Oh, you just jealous. Oh, sure. sure. Oh, I can't wait till Saturday. Aren't you forgetting the reason for your little act in there? Oh, yeah, that's right. It was just an act, wasn't it? I forgot for a minute. Keep your mind on your driving. Now turn around and go back to the cafe. Go back? What? I forgot my cab. Oh, guess I ain't the only one that's always forgetting. Yeah. Hope it wasn't no cops seeing me make that U-turn. Turn out your lights as we drive out. Well, why? They want to attract Goldie's attention. Well, okay, they are. Where you want to park at? Out here on the road. I'll be right out. Goldie. I just went in the telephone booth. Oh, I forgot my cap. I thought she might have put it away. Uh, listen to that static on that radio. Always does it if anybody telephones. Yeah. My cap must be around here somewhere. There's a cap on the floor under that stool. Oh, yeah, that's it. Thanks. Get going, quick. North? Right. And step on it. Keep your eyes open. I don't see nothing yet. What are we looking for? Keep your eye peeled. Don't relax for a minute. You think we're sure enough going to get hijacked tonight? I'm sure of it. Son, the more I think about it, the more I think you got Goldie Peg wrong. She was in the telephone booth when I went back to the cafe. Well, she might have been calling her mama. She called her mother the night Bing was murdered. Hey, you don't suppose there's a chance of us being murdered, do you? Who knows? Still don't see nothing. We must have come a good 60 miles. 58 to be exact. Maybe they missed us. Maybe we spent too much time back there at that gas station. I don't think so. Uh, son, seeing as how I might not be alive to talk this over with you, why, tell me, how did you know all them police would be waiting for us at the gas station? The little plan I worked out with Sheriff Hunley. <laughs> I turn near fell out of the cab when I seen him. Must have been a couple of dozen of them. Twenty. And every one of them handy with a machine gun. Won't them hijackers be surprised when they find out we carrying a load of police instead of cigarettes and liquor? That's the general idea. Hey, what's that up ahead? Looks like a flare. Yeah, it is a flare. Two of them. You reckon there's a truck in trouble? No. Just what we've been looking for. This, this the hijacking game? Yeah. Then you better warn our machine gun crew in the back. Right. Three knocks on the back of the cab. Stay here, you? Yeah, I'm answered yet. Yeah, there it is. They're ready. I'm getting pretty close. What do I do now? Slow up for the flares, just as they expect we will. A couple of thugs will probably jump on the running board and try to open the cab doors. You sure yours is locked? Oh, you're tighter than a drum. So is mine. Now, when they hit the running boards, be sure the truck is stopped. Throw on the emergency brake and then duck. Do you understand? Yeah, that. When the truck stops, Hunley and his men will pour out the back and start blasting away with their Tommy guns. Well, can't we get in on the phone? Not unless we have to. They'll be covering us. We're depending on surprise. Hey, there's somebody in the middle of the road. Signaling with a flashlight. Yeah. I guess this is it, all right. All right. I'm going to slow down now. Only seems to be just one man. The others are probably hiding behind the truck. Remember your instructions? Yeah. Here we are. I'm in trouble, pal. Can you give me a hand? What's the matter? Hey, what is this? I need some liquor, pal. Stick them up. Get them up, both of you, and get out of the cab. This is stick up? You said it open those doors before we drill you. Duck, duck. <laughs>
Come on in, Jack. Here in my office. You don't mind if Doc comes along, too? Yeah, how about me? Oh, not at all. Come on in. Want to congratulate you both. Fine work. Well, same to you, Sheriff. Any of your men hurt seriously? No, that's the best part of it. Only a couple of scratches. And we got ten hijackers. Four dead and six wounded. Well, then I guess we're washed up here. Well, I think we've broken the back of the gang, all right. But I do wish we could have gotten the brains behind it. Uh, none of the wounded hijackers will sing? Well, they claim they got their orders from Bugs Thompson. He died back there on the road. Oh, that's too bad. What about the girl, Goldie? Did you pick her up? Yeah, we're working her over. She says she always called Bugs Thompson on the phone. Well, now, maybe Thompson was a brain. No, Thompson was just a thug. He could do the rough stuff, but somebody else did the planning. It was too clever. Oh, then, then Goldie was a member of the gang? Sure, she admits it. You're breaking Doc's heart, Sheriff. Doc had a wolfy's eye on Goldie. He even gave her a couple of bottles of scotch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so that's it. Huh? Yeah? And Miss Xavier Carmichael's here, Sheriff. Says you sent for him. Carmichael? Uh-oh. This probably means trouble for you, Jack. Oh, I don't think so. In fact, I took the liberty of sending for him in your name, Sheriff. You want him in here? Yeah, do you mind? Uh, show him in. Yes, sir. I'll get him. What's the idea, Jack? Got something you haven't let me in on? Maybe. This way, Mr. Carmichael. Sheriff's right inside. Pretty late hour to be getting me out of bed, Sheriff. Must be something important. What? Packard. Oh, so you know Jack Packard. Packard, what's the meaning of this? I thought I told you... Carmichael, I accuse you of being the mastermind behind the cigarette and liquor hijacking gang. I accuse you... What? Hey, Jack. I accuse you of murder and robbery on the highway. Packard, you must be out of your mind. You must be drunk. Yes, what is this, Packard? This is your mastermind, Sheriff. Carmichael, your gang was rounded up tonight and Bugs Thompson is dead. Bugs Thompson? Never heard of the gentleman. Who is he? I know it seemed like a foolproof setup, Carmichael. None of the gang knew who they were working for except Goldie. Goldie? Yeah, we got her, too. She gave away the whole show. Oh, that two-faced little brat. <laughs> yep. Okay, Sheriff, I, I guess that's that. Well, looks to me like a friend Carmichael's about ready to sign a confession, Jack. How about it, Sheriff? Yeah. Deputy, take him outside and give him pen and paper. It's a pleasure. Come along, you. Jack, what goes on here? You throw me a curve. How'd you happen to suspect Carmichael? He's got wealth, position. What was his motive? Greed. Just plain greed. He was rich, but he wanted to be richer. Yeah, but Goldie, Jack, how come you know she knew Carmichael? Because I listened to her telephone call. But she always called from the booth. How could you hear her? Remember the static on the radio? Yeah. Remember I told you it was the telephone dial? Yeah, yeah, I remember. Well, when I went back to my cap, Goldie was dialing a number. I listened to the clicks over the radio. I counted the clicks and got the number. Granite, 9854. And that was Carmichael's number? I checked with the telephone company and found out the number was a private wire leased to Carmichael. And from what Carmichael said, Goldie not only worked for him, she must have been his girl. Sorry, Doc. Better luck next time. Oh, that's okay, son. She was only a strawberry blonde after all. I never did go for a strawberry blonde very much. Now... Now, now, you take a real flaming redhead. Not me. You take her. You think I won't? Whoop. I'll take a flaming redhead every time. You have just heard I Love Adventure, a new Carlton E. Morse production featuring Michael Raffetto as Jack Packard and Barton Yarborough as Doc Long. Next week... International Incident Number 13, entitled The Ambassador Ricardo Santos Incident, An Affair of Death in the African Jungles. Other players in tonight's show included Lou Krugman, Peggy Weber, Russell Thorson, Frank Richards, and Frank Gerstel. Curse on the Highway was written by Thomas J. Ahern. Organ music by Rex Curry. Your announcer, Dresser Dahlstedt. How often have you envied the face and the complexion of the woman whose skin was firm and as smooth as a rose petal? How often have you wished that yours could look the same? Well, you can have the holiday magic look if you will just stop wishing and start working today with the carefully planned facial exercise routines that I'm going to explain to you in just a moment. Keep in mind, 
Just as you must exercise to firm and trim the muscles of your body, so must you exercise to firm and trim the 24 superficial muscles of your face and neck that control and reflect its appearance. If your past neglect is beginning to show, it's never too late to go to work on those fine lines and flabby folds that make you look older than your age. If you diet to lose weight, this is another very good reason for your daily holiday magic facial exercise routine to keep your skin firm and smooth and beautiful. Even if your face has not yet shown the signs and lines of age, a facial exercise each day will help keep you looking young and lovely for a long time to come. You know, it's a well-known fact that the most of you women give all of your time, thoughts, and efforts to everyone else in the world except yourselves. And in doing so, you not only neglect your own well-being, but you also neglect your appearance, which in turn is harmful to your whole outlook on life in general. If you were to ask me what to do about it, I would tell you to call a halt to giving all of your time and effort to everyone else and start giving some of that time to yourself each day to become a more beautiful and attractive person in face and mind. Now for the exercises. And the first one will be to strengthen the muscles around your mouth, which will help to discourage wrinkles and fine lines around your lip line. Here I want you to gently press your lips together in a pursed position. Now then, open and spread your mouth as wide as you can, just as you see illustrated in section A. Come on, come on, all the way if you want to get the full benefit of the exercise. Now relax. Let's take this one five times. Purse your lips. Now open wide. Purse your lips and open wide. Purse your lips. Open wide. Purse your lips and open wide. Once more. Purse your lips and open wide. Now relax. Now then, the next one is section B. This one will help to discourage a drooping lip line, a crooked mouth, or a thin lip line. It's one of the best lip exercises I know of because it's so simple to do. All right, close your mouth and try to think of a rabbit's quick lip motions. Now, purse your lips, keeping your mouth closed. Now, spread your lips, keep your mouth closed. All right, now rapidly. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's it. Relax. If you have a problem mouth, this is a good one to do whenever you think of it. And by the way, let me caution you. If at any time you feel a little tired or dizzy doing these exercises, as you start to embrace them or until you get used to doing them, by all means, stop and sit back. Then when you feel totally relaxed, start them again. Don't ever try to force yourself to the point that you become uncomfortable. The next three exercises, section C, D, and E, are for strengthening the cheek muscles around your mouth, which will help to prevent the nose to mouth lines or the laugh lines as they are sometimes called. All right, section C. Close your mouth and take a deep breath. Now fill your cheeks with air and this will puff them up. Now then, blow that air against your cheeks as though you were blowing up a balloon. Hold it, hold it. Now exhale and we'll do this one three times. Okay, ready? Take a deep breath. Close your mouth and blow the pressure of your breath just as hard as you can against your cheeks. Hold it, hold it. Now exhale. Let's try it again. Take a deep breath. Close your mouth. Now blow up that balloon, keep your mouth closed, and blow just as hard as you can. That's it. Now exhale. All right, once more. Take a deep breath, close your mouth, and puff up your cheeks. Blow and blow hard. Hold it, hold it. All right, that's it. Exhale and relax. This next exercise, section D, may take a little practice, but it's well worth extending the effort. What I want you to do is to set your teeth and close your mouth, take a deep breath, then blow your lips to make them flap. Do you understand what I mean? Well, listen carefully and you'll get the idea. 
Now let's try it. Close your mouth and set your teeth. Now take a deep breath and blow your lips. Take another deep breath and blow. Once more, take a deep breath and blow. Feel your lips loosen when they flap like that? You can do this one until your lips get tired each day when you're alone, and in a few weeks, you'll notice a great difference when you apply your lipstick. Now for the last of the mouth-to-nose line exercises I want you to do is similar to the first one, but I'd better explain it to you before we do it. Look at the photos of Section E. Fill your cheeks with air, keeping your mouth tightly closed. Now swoosh the air from one cheek to the other. Now with your mouth still closed, swoosh the air up under your upper lip. Now down inside your lower lip. That's right, left, up, and down. Four times will do the trick for this one. All right, take a deep breath and close your mouth. Fill your cheeks with air and swoosh right. Now left. Now up under your upper lip. Now down inside your lower lip. Hold it. Okay, exhale. Let's try it again. Take a deep breath. Close your mouth. Swoosh right. Swoosh left. Now up, now down, that's it, exhale. Once again, but this time I want you to hold each swoosh movement for at least two seconds. Okay, get set. Take a deep breath, close your mouth and swoosh to the right. Hold it, now the left. Hold it, hold it. Now your upper lip and hold it, hold it, that's it. Now down inside your lower lip, and that will do it. At this point, I want you to stretch your mouth in all directions to relax the tension, as indicated in section F, while we get ready to do some of the eye muscle exercises. Stretch it, close it, stretch it, close it, stretch it, and close it. If it's crow's feet around your eyes you're worried about, then just raise your eyebrows as high as you can, as illustrated in section G. Now close your mouth and push your jaw from side to side with all your effort. Let's try this four times. Raise your brows up, up, hold them up. Now then, push your jaw to the right and hold it. Now to the left and hold it. Feel those muscles stretch above your cheekbone and to the sides of your eyes. Let's do it again. Eyebrows up, jaw right, jaw left, and relax. Let's do it again. Brows up, jaw right, jaw left, and relax. Once more for good measure. Brows up, jaw to the right and hold it, jaw to the left and hold it, hold it, and relax. This little exercise has a twofold purpose. It also helps to eradicate laugh lines at the same time. When was the last time you winked at someone? Well, you should do it more often because it will help prevent not only drooping eyelids, but it works wonders on under eye puffiness. Follow section H. Try it and I want you to wink 10 times with each eye, one at a time. All right, the left eye first, start winking, one, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now the right eye. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Once more, the left eye first. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's have a little tighter wink this time. Now the right eye and give it all you've got. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and relax. Now look straight ahead and blink with both eyes. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Try to make winking a habit. 
It has a way of saying more than the spoken word. Here's a wonderful exercise illustrated in section I if you want to firm up or prevent loose eyelid folds. Are you ready? Okay, sit up straight. Now then, look up to the ceiling. Don't tip your head up. Now blink your eyes two or three times. Now look down to the floor with your eyes only and blink. One, two, three. Now look to the left and blink. One, two, three. Don't be alarmed if you felt a little strained doing this one. It's just because you're using muscles which have been inactive and sluggish for years. Let's do that one once more. Sit up straight. Look up to the ceiling. Now blink three times. One, two, three. Now down to the floor and one, two, three. Now look to the right and blink one, two, three. Now to the left and blink three times. One, two, three, and that's it. To firm up or avoid a double chin, follow the photos in section J. Start by raising your eyebrows as high as you can. Now push your jaw and chin as far forward as you can. Keep those brows up. Now purse your lips and push them up to your nose and hold it. Feel those muscles stretch? That's just what they needed. Relax and we'll do it again. Now, eyebrows up, push your jaw forward, purse your lips and push them up to your nose. That's it. Now let's try this once more. And this time I want you to give it all you've got. Brows up all the way. That's it. Now then, push your jaw out as far as you can and hold it. Purse your lips and push them up to your nose. Hold it, hold it, and relax. Section K depicts two ways to relieve tension of contraction induced by these facial exercises. Just raise your brows as high as you can, and at the same time open your mouth as wide as you can, and you'll feel all of the muscles in your face and neck that you never knew existed. Another way to relieve tension is to sit up straight and shake your shoulders in all directions. Then let them go limp. Try it. Shake them up and down, up and down. That's up and down. Now from front to back, front to back, front to back. Feel better? I'm sure you do. This next one, which is section L I want you to do, will help to control your jowl muscles. It works like a chin strap. I call it the yes and no treatment. We'll start with the no movement by dropping your chin down on your chest. Now turn your head as far to the left as you can. Feel those muscles pull at the sides of your jaw. That's the old jowl muscles at work. Now turn your head slowly to the right side and hold it there for a second. Relax a moment, and we'll try this one five times. Here we go. Keep your head down, head to the left, now the right, back to the left, now to the right, left, right, left, right. Relax and take a deep breath or two before we get started with the yes part of the exercise, which is shown in section M. First sit up straight and let your head fall all the way down on your chest. Try to make your chin touch your chest. Feel those muscles on the back of your neck stretch. Now to tone those chin and jaw muscles, slowly let your head fall as far back as it will. All the way back. Is that as far back as you can get it? Okay. Bring it back to its normal position and we'll do this one five times. Head down, now slowly back. Head down all the way and back. Head down and slowly back. Head down, make it touch your chest and back. Head down and back. Now you can relax a moment before we do the next one for the neck. This next one, as seen in section N, will not only help firm the loose skin of your neck, but it will also relax your neck muscles. Sit up straight again and lay your head over on your left shoulder. If your head is over far enough, you'll feel the muscles stretch all the way up again behind your ear. Now slowly raise your head and let it gently fall to the right shoulder. 
Let's do this five times and keep your movement smooth and easy. Left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, and that's it. Now for the last one. Follow section O. I call it around the clock because your head makes a complete circle. With it, you not only exercise your neck and shoulders, but you also trim jowls and double chins. Let's do it. Sit up straight and drop your head down on your chest. Do you feel those muscles in the back of your neck stretch? Now then, leading with your chin, turn your head slowly to the left and try to touch your shoulder with your chin. Hold it, hold it. Now, raise your head up and at the same time, turn your head to the right shoulder. Here you'll notice that your head has made a complete circle. Let's try it again. Head down on your chest, point your chin to the left shoulder. Hold it a second. Now up and around with your chin to your right shoulder. Got that? All right, once more. Head down, head left, head up and over to the right. Hold it, hold it a second and relax. Here's one that will relieve the tension in your shoulders and neck muscles. Clasp your hands behind your neck so that they're comfortable and hold your elbows out straight above your shoulders. Now bring your elbows forward with all your might and try to make them touch each other. They won't, but it's this effort that does the job. Now back to the first position and we'll do this five times. All right? Elbows back and out straight. Now slowly bring them to the front. Hold it, hold it, now back. Front, back, front. Try to make them touch. Back, front, back, front. Hold it a second and relax. Last but certainly not least, it's the very best. Yes, it's Holiday Magic's Fruit Tang Skin Toner. It's designed as a rinse to completely remove all traces of cleansing cream. It contains no alcohol and leaves both you and your skin delightfully refreshed. Ladies, I've done everything but come into your home personally to help you become a more beautiful individual. Now it's up to you. Make your daily facial exercises a daily habit. And you'll prove there isn't a woman in the world who can't become more beautiful with glamour and a new personality. This is Ern Westmore reminding you that every day can be a holiday with Holiday Magic Informative Cosmetics.